Hello everyone, welcome to Being MTK. On this channel, I do travel vlogs. Um, I do talk about a little bit of African history and culture, um, specifically Liberia, because that's where I am from. And recently I added travel stories from around the world. So I do three different things on this channel. If you are watching for the very first time, make sure you subscribe to this channel and turn on your post notification belt for whenever I post new videos. And if you are a returning subscriber, shout out to you. Thanks for returning back to being MTK. So today I want to talk about Black History Month because I love history, um, mostly African um, history. But when I hear the word Black History Month, I think it's for all Africans, not only African Americans living in the U.S., but Africans in general, because Africans from Africa migrated to the U.S. So I think it's, you know, all of that. But anyways, um, the last time, I believe it was a couple of months ago, I did post a video about um, the settlers, the um, descendants of free slaves that settled in uh, West Africa, Liberia. And I love all the responses that I got um, from the video. Um, it did not sit well with a lot of people because they felt like I was being really biased. And some people agree with what I was saying and others did not. But however, I just want to um, just talk a little more about Liberian history. Again, I'm not a politician in no way, shape or form. So when I do these videos, I try not to get into politics because that is not my interest. It's not of my interest. So I'm just going to um, elaborate on that story a little more. Now, when I talk about the video in part one, I did talk about how the descendants of free slaves went to Liberia and how they settled in Liberia. But have you ever wondered like, what it was like um, for them or, you know, living in Liberia, like when they got there, you know, how things were for them, like how the, you know, indigenous people, the people of the land, how they handle everything, how they accepted them and also how, you know, things were like, imagine you are living in a different country, uh, different atmosphere, like the weather is different and all of a sudden you are put in another climate, something that you're not used to. Um, the freed slaves, the descendants of free slaves that went to Liberia, you do know that they did not know anything about Africa because the, the original Africans that they took to the new world, which is America or Europe or whatever, um, they took slaves during those days. You do know that um, when slavery was over, the ones that actually returned back to Africa um, had no idea. Let's talk a little bit about what it was like, you know, when they got to um, Liberia. So again, you know, as I stated earlier, um, people thought my video was really biased because I only um, talk about it in a one-sided way. And that was not my intention in any way, shape or form. Um, the video was only to um, talk about how the settlers arrived in Liberia, like how they actually got there and, you know, and all that stuff. But anyways, have you ever wondered, like when they got there, what actually transpired? Like how were they, um, you know, how were they interacting with the indigenous people on the land? Like, you know, how did they go about things? Because... They spoke English and the uh, original, the you know, the natives of the land, they were speaking their dialects and stuff. How did everything go down? You know, how did it go down? So anyways, imagine when they got there, they got there and first of all, the first thing they noticed was um, people were already on the land in Liberia. Apparently, they had no idea, right? So imagine, you know, those people dress, and I'm referring to the settlers, they dress like the um, plantation owners, like they dress like 
um, people from back in the day, they wore long dresses, they wore the hats, you know, they were like very polished and the guys wore like suits and, you know, hats and all that stuff. And the original people, you know, our people, the original Liberians, you know, they were just wearing like, I cannot say naked, but they were wearing like less clothes. Um, you know, a lot of them were hunters. Um, during those days, they had like chiefs, you know, the native um, chiefs and stuff, tribal chiefs. And women would wear like lapa and, you know, all that stuff. So it was two blends of different cultures. Like they just did not blend in, you know. They had their own way of doing things. And then the, the natives of the land had their own way of doing things, okay. So when they got there, you know, they said like, you know, hey, wait a minute. These people are not, uh-uh, they are not like us. They are not dressed like us. They cannot speak English. Like, no, I think we are better than they are. Like, you know, so immediately they decided to distinguish themselves. They decided to separate themselves from the natives. So they decided to live in their own settlements, their own settlements. So I think they didn't want to live with the natives because, you know, they clearly had nothing in common, which is understandable. But was that in everybody's um, interest? I don't know, because they had settlements like, um, example, my grandmother is from Crossaville. So that's one of the Congo settlements in Liberia, Crossaville. Um, another one is Artington. Um, Clay Ashland, Mount Barkley, you know, all the little uh, Conga settlements. And one of the things um, they did was um, build houses very similar to the plantations in America. So these people felt like they were superiors. So, but anyway, so these people uh, build houses like plantation style. Like if you were to visit Liberia now, you will still see like some of these houses standing, but just how you will see the plantation houses in um, America, you know, that's the same style. They try to imitate, you know, they copy the white masters, you know, and so that's how they build their houses. And not only that they copy, but I think that's what they knew, you know, that's their, you know, that's the only thing they knew how to do. So they copied that style. And so they had those houses. And then in addition to the houses and their, you know, way of dressing and all that stuff. Hmm. Like I said, they were superiors. So they treated the natives different, different. When I mean different, like example, um, they would not associate with the natives because they felt like the natives were not of standards okay so example you know they had their own settlements you know as i stated but also their function like all their gatherings you know whatever they had it was just for them but one of the good things that they did was they educated a lot of natives so People, indigenous people would send their kids off to live with um, the Congas people. I, I'm just going to say Conga because that's how we call it now a day. So um, natives would send their kids to go and live with the Conga people. Um, when they got there, you know, in exchange, like a lot of them work hard, you know, like the little kids, just how you see the plantation stuff, you know, the kids will work very hard in the fields and help with whatever chores, housework, you know, and women, native women will work in their houses, you know, and stuff like that. And in, in exchange for that, they will send some of them, not all of them, but some of them were sent off to school. And some of them were sent off to school, which is a plus, you know, because a lot of them got educated from the America, America Liberians or Congas, okay? And so a lot of them got educated from that 
Now, I am not saying that all natives were not educated. Do not misquote me. Do not get me wrong. I just said, my, I am only saying that majority of them got education through the Conga people, okay? So my grandfather was um, Basa by tribe when he was a little boy. He was sent off to live with uh, the Conga people in Artington. And they did the exact same thing that the masters would do in America. When you send your child off to live with um, the Conga people, they will change your name. So if you're if you have like traditional name, traditional African name, they will change their names. So you will get English name. So let's say if you are going to live with um a, a, a Thomas, you know, if their family name is Thomas, they will give you and your name is maybe if you have an African name like Koto, Koto, they will change that name to something else. They will give you an English name, maybe Mary Thomas, okay? And that was the same mentality that the people in America did, the slaves um, holders in America. That was the same mentality. They changed a lot of the, the slaves' names, okay? So your name will immediately be changed, and that will be it for the rest of your life. So a lot of them had name change and stuff like that. So um, I met a guy who told me a story. Well, I was not born at the time, but... He mentioned that in the 50s and the 60s, um, by the way, this guy is now in his early 80s. He said that in Liberia, when they all went to a college example, and this was just in the 50s, 60s, you know, and stuff like that. Um, in the colleges, um, the Congo people, American Liberians, they will separate from the native. And one of the prime example is, let's say if you have a traditional African name, they will not identify with you. He told me that like at school in the cafeteria, like all the, uh, you know, American Liberians or Conga people, you know, they sat separately and, you know, the native people will sit separately because they, you know, if you have a African, I mean, original name, native name, they did not want to identify with you. In dating, they will only date their own, you know, Conga people, American Liberian. And apparently things change later on. I mean, we all know that. But before, I mean, this type of behavior, you know, the mentality carry on all the way, you know, to the 60s, the 50s, the 70s, you know, and so on. Even though, I mean, like it was not like that for everyone, but majority of the people did that in school and all that stuff. And so now I don't want to get into the political aspect of the whole thing because we, you know, kind of all know what happened and, you know, how this whole, you know, uh, America like being like the presidents being, you know, from the U.S., like all the presidents up to 1980. I mean, like everybody know that. So I'm just going to skip that whole part. But that's how it was in Liberia, you know, a form of, you know, suppression and so, you know, stories like that, um, you know, it just was not right, but it happened. Um, another um, story is the same guy who told me about school. He said his father was a tax collector. And so when these people got to Liberia, they didn't have cars during those days. So one of the ways they got around was, it's like a hammock. Two people or one person will be on the front and another person will be on the back. I will see if I can insert a picture here. And that's how they got around. That's how they got around. So that was their form of cars, transportation. And guess who was carrying that? Of course, the indigenous people, the native people, right? So one, you know, one person will hold hair. Another person would be in the back and then it was like a little hammock and then they would sit in it or lay in it, whatever. And that's how they got it around because they did not want to walk. So, I mean, all in all, I feel like this is really sad because blacks as a whole, I mean, the same things happen even up to modern day, even with living in the U.S., like not all, again, to not misquote me, but some black Americans feel like they're better than African, you know, and sometimes the same thing happened, but 
people don't know like it's all the same black people but if you know history you know you know what it is right so anyways and so natives will do that for them you know even with all the law making and stuff like that you know natives were not allowed to go into their special places you know where they make their decisions and the laws and stuff but again i'm still going to say this i'm not going to get into politics okay because i feel like personally i feel like politics is very stressful i'm not trying to you know stress over that okay but anyways you know so those were some of the things that happened and people will say that this is a one-sided um you know uh story because i'm not saying anything in favor of the um america liberians me being a part of you know i'm a mixture you know half and half anyway so like you know but anyways you know i feel like they did a lot of good things as well because you know i think they you know educated a lot of the natives you know they brought the schooling system into liberia you know they help with you know a lot of things you know the law making and you know and, and all that stuff so i'm not saying again that natives were not educated they had a lot of uh, natives that you know had heads on their shoulders so that's not what I'm saying but I'm just saying that majority of the population you know they went to school and stuff um, you know so I'm gonna stop here I'm only bringing this story um, because you know I had to say something before Black History Month is over and just know that Black History Month is not only about uh, the blacks you know that were in america like black history month is for all blacks you know I, at least that's what i believe all blacks that came from africa you know their stories you know and and what they fought for and what they you know they they, they did you know to impact you know the economy so that's what it is but anyways you know i'm gonna stop here for now and you know so the moral of the story is suppression descendants of black slaves that went to uh, Liberia when they got there, things were not so okay, you know, they just kind of shifted everything around. It could be for the good, it could be for the bad, but however, things were switched around. And so, um, you know, that's all I have to say about this story in addition to uh, my other story. And if you have not seen that, um, you can look on this uh, channel and find that um, I talk about the freed slaves that went to Africa. I think that's the title of that. But they were not actually free slaves because they were descendants of the uh, free slaves, you know, that went and settled in um, Liberia. But I also want to say before I close this, I also want to say, uh, you know, kudos to them because it took a lot for someone to leave their own home, you know, the only home that they know. To go and settle in uh liberia or just anywhere in africa as a whole because they knew nothing about you know life on that side and even with the traveling uh, on the on the, the voyage a lot of them die when they got to liberia as well a lot of them die because of the harsh uh the, the harsh weather um you know from malaria you know mosquito bites uh typhoid fever like all those things a lot of them die but you know it it only took you know the bravest uh people to go and settle you know somewhere different a whole new world so shout out to them for doing that and um you know it it, it took a lot to be able to do that and the ones that did not migrate uh they stay in america and became you know what is known today as african americans um you know and we will have another discussion on the whole African-American part because I feel like um, the name given to blacks living in America, like African-American, I feel like that is totally wrong. Um, I think it should be black Americans instead of African-Americans. Um, I think I should be the one, people like us, you know, who were not born here, but we migrated here um but we are from africa we know where we came from you know and stuff we should be called african americans because we are part african and now we are american citizens so we should be called african american and then the 
the um blacks that are here the original blacks that are here should be called maybe black americans or another way anyways because how do you call someone like me for example you know i'm you know african but i'm also american citizen so like how do you call i mean like how do i call myself just african by naturalization i'm a citizen as well so i don't know but that's something you know that should have been figured out a long time ago but you know what i guess they didn't think that original africans were coming i guess they probably didn't you know think it out but anyways that is a whole new topic okay that needs to change so thanks for watching this video and i hope you uh comment below let me know what you think i don't expect everyone to agree with what i'm saying it's just my you know sentiments and you are entitled to your opinion as well all right so make sure you give this video a thumbs up i cannot say thumbs down even if you do not agree with me give it a thumbs up and i'll see you all on the next video